What's up everyone, this is Ekitech Playground. Today, again, the topic will be DevSecOps. And we will focus on one very cool tool, which is called Sneak. And I'm Sneak Ambassador, so <laughs> you can trust me on that. I'll spend some time with it. And we will talk mainly about Sneak free resources that you can use for your disposal and also focusing on some small open source projects from Sneak. So stay tuned and let's move together. Absolutely fantastic tool is the Docker Scan, which allows you to scan your Docker images. So when you have your Docker engine up and running and you have any local images you want to scan, you can just write Docker Scan. And I uh, see that I need to fix some small space problem. Here it is. And then the name of the image, dash dash JSON, then, then go to like forward that to results.json. So I will hit enter. Uh, what it will do, it will analyze the container dependencies. It will check out the image itself. It will try to find the vulnerabilities. And when it will be done, it will create a results.json with a list of the vulnerabilities, known dependencies, known issues for your selected Docker container. The thing is that the JSON, it's not really readable for the, uh, for the, users or for humans and you want to make it more easy to use so then it queries the database on the sneak servers and then it creates also references on the sneak uh, vulnerability database so what you want to do is sneak and that's something that you need to install by yourself for that you need to have uh, i think jq and npm based sneak to html that's the name of the library then input will be results.json and the output will be results.html. You can name it whenever you like, but that's that's my my naming. So results.json and output results.html. I will hit enter and when I will do, it will create vulnerability snapshot and save it in the HTML file. And that's great. Let's move forward. After you scan, your Docker image, and after you convert the JSON results into HTML file, you are able to get really nice report in the sneak style, which is a snack, sneak to test report, scan the following path. That means the, the following, uh, following image, since it's a Debian and, uh, basically the following 14 known vulnerabilities are there 52 vulnerable dependency paths and nine dependencies and when the scan was done and when you will go through that we will find out that there's insecure randomness in which package manager uh, if it is vulnerable node when it was introduced the references remediation and overview so dns rebinding and other things of by one error uh, http request smuggling and other and other parts and really nice easy to read report even without accessing to sneak GUI. And this is great because Docker scan is a command that anyone can run. Only thing that you need to do is install the NPM package for translating JSON output to your report. And then you have this really nice and smooth report. I need to say that sneak advisor is one of the best tools and one of my favorite from sneak that is provided to community. Another very helpful tool is a Snick advisor. It's free advisor for open source packages. So you can go through code samples, categories, the dev another developer tools, all the packages for JavaScript, Python, or Go. And you can have also examples. You can search through the packages if you want, and it evaluates popularity of the package, maintenance, security, and the community. That means that it looks on various parameters. So you can search for the PyPy, NPM, Go, or Docker. And for example, for Angular, it's published 10 months ago, Angular version 1.83. And what you can get from this free advisor, I'm saying this is for free. You don't need to pay anything. You just have right there the access to it. There are also information how to install it from readme's. You also see the secret issues found. So that means that 
how many vulnerabilities, how many issues are there in which version. And you see that this is pretty, pretty new to, to this time or like one year old. And then you can check like for free, you know, and also if you want to have the enterprise version, you can go with the enterprise, but you can check if you have these vulnerabilities in your packages. So that's his, this is checking the open source dependencies and open source chain and open source vulnerabilities. It's not checking the, uh, like the custom code that you wrote. So it is focusing on CVEs, the known vulnerabilities. Then you can check the popularity. The weekly downloads on that is like almost half of the million downloads per week. And you can check also the download trend on this, on this package. So for example, the Git amount of GitHub stars, the forks, the contributions. So how many people contributed to that, the direct usage popularity and another, another interesting things. Also the maintenance, you can see how it is like, if it is inactive, if it is deprecated, et cetera, et cetera. And then also you can check the community. So you can say, or you can search if they have readme's, if they have contributing that MD, uh, how many contributors are there? If there's a code of conduct, if there's any founding, and also the package health. It's overall health of the package from the various attributes where you see that how old it is, what are the versions, what are the distance tags, maintainers, dependencies, install size, and all of these things. So for me, like, because I focus on the DevSecOps, so here there's some uh, security issues found and also the, you see that this is inactive package. So it's obvious that it will be not super great. When I will go to another JavaScript packages, you will see the popular indexes or popular JavaScript packages indexed. And for example, I will go to whenever we want for Naval. I don't know that one, but let's check it. And you can also check what is the health package um, and what is the package health score, if it is inactive, if it is not. And you can just go to whenever you like. You can go to Python. You can switch the language, for example, uh, I can search for NumPy or unknown fields. Okay. It, it looks like it will like, take some time and I don't want to search here, but you can check whenever you want, you know, Django extra fields, Kalelo, whenever you want. So for example, Slacker, that's fine. That's fine. And again, another inactive li library, but I will go to advisor. You can go back. You can search for, for example, here the examples. That's what I wanted to have. NumPy, and all, again, you see that the health of this package is pretty good. It's 94 from 100. The maintenance is sustainable and explores similar packages. And also you see the popularity, when it was the most popular, what's the maintenance, all of these great things. You can also check the previous versions, how they are from like in the context of security, how they, how they like went to the path of like getting better and better. And also not sure, not, not sure how to use Numpy. There are also code samples and readme's so you can access them directly here as, and also FMQs, FAQs, sorry. So this is a very good resource for free and I highly recommend it to everyone who is interested in DevSecOps. Sneak vulnerability DB is something that's, which is run by Sneak. This is like open source vulnerability database with known open source problems. There are also other developer tools. Uh, but I want to show you like vulnerabilities per week or from the last week based on operating system and based on application. And you can, you can check also the, all the open source vulnerabilities and you can easily filter here based on, for example, Maven, NPM, for example, if you are interested in NPM packages, problems, you can click on the specific problem, uh, like the cross site scripting in the specific package, which is, which is affected by that when it was introduced. Uh, the overview, then the details and the types of the attacks that you can do, the cross-site scripting, stored, reflected, dom base, uh, mutated. So various things and affected environments, how you can prevent it. Then there are some GitHub advisories around it. You can test your applications. You can also see the uh, sneak CVS score. So you can see more here, what, what is affected. And you, you can see, you know, the, the scoring from the CVS perspective based on sneak. So, and also it's with some explanation on the scoring and also there's a sneak ID, which they assigned to that. So this is like specific vulnerability database, database for sneak. And also if there is a person who reported that, uh, there is a credit to that. So you can report new vulnerability by yourself by clicking on report a vulnerability. And what you can do is it's pretty simple. You can, you can report it by yourself, but that's not important for today. 
and what you can easily do you can go you can basically just report it or you can find a mistake if you find a mistake you can report it too you can go back to vulnerable db and if you are searching for the specific uh, cve so you can check it and just hit enter so common vulnerabilities and exposures it's a cv and then it will tell you okay i'll search for the log4j and it will tell me all the things that are related to log4j and i can click on the specific effects on the specific type when it was published i can go to the specific problem and i will see what is the problem with that this one is super critical so you can see the description and and also the references for the various sources so this is a great tool for everyone and I highly recommend that. Next tool is Sneak Code Checker, which is a AI or machine learning driven tool for code reviews. I already used the sample code. There is a limitation for 10,000 characters, also limitation for the languages. So it supports Python, JavaScript, Go, Java, PHP, TypeScript, Ruby, and C Sharp. And also you see that there are three, two from three scans left. So every 24 hours, you have just three scans. So what you can do, you can run a scan. It doesn't replace your static review tooling. It's just like for, I would say for free with some limitations and don't forget to read terms of the service. So I can check the code. It will scan it. There are three vulnerabilities, two high, one medium. There's an SQL injection. It shows me where it is. Also, it tells me more about the common weaknesses and numeration. Also, there's a code injection and open redirect. So it tells you on which lines. So that means the scope of the definition of the method. And it will also like highlight where and which methods is vulnerable or which part of the code introduces the vulnerability. And you can also use like a Bitbucket, Azure AD, Docker, whenever to sign in and to see the power of sneak code review. So that's another tool which is for free that deserves your attention. Sneak also runs something called DevSecOps Hub, where there's lots of reading about the DevSecOps culture, DevSecOps overviews. You can check what are the pillars. Uh, also, there are some interesting videos about that. So lots of crafts that you can go through. So what is DevSecOps from Sneak? What is DevOps versus DevSec no, DevSecOps? Uh, the importance of that. And all of these things that are like explanatory or explanation part of what it means. What are the impacts of that? And you will find the culture aspects of that here in the DevSecOps hubs. And I, re I really, really recommend that because DevSecOps, it's not about the technology, it's about the culture. And this is pretty good basic reading for everyone. Snick Learn is a great and it's amazing learning portal. So when you will go to lessons, it's free and you can track your profile or you can track your progress by signing up for free. So for example, insecure hash, you can click on that one and you have independent lessons and you can have these like walk through through the lesson. You can read through the basics There are also like step-by-step -step guides, what it means with some like, you see that there was some ad, but no, no problem because it's, it's for free. And then you have this password crack and you can see how it works. Check. You can see how the M MD5 works, how it is easy to crack. And then you can start again. So there is like interactive learning, very easy to learn. And also with some fun facts and infos. If you are looking for some learning pad, the OWASP top 10 is right here, right here, right there for you. So when you will go to OWASP top 10, you can, for example, select the SQL injection or code injection or XML and external entity ex injection and, or XXE, like expansion, external entity expansion sometimes. Uh, code like that and then you have this again the testing for xxc first start then it will show you step by step what you can do you can click on that it will show you what are the contents of the post so it's very interactive very easy to learn and very easy to read for everyone there is also one honorable mention which is a sneak blog it's pretty loaded by resources for reading you can filter that by application security by cloud native security, by DevSecOps, which is my favorite topic. And you can go through that and you can also show more. You can search, for example, for, I don't know, AWS, um, hit it. And you can search for the specific keywords and it will show you specific things related to your topic. 
This is just honorable mention and I really want to make sure that you will know about that. The last thing and but the coolest is the language server supporting the language server protocol, which is open source by Sneak. And it's pretty cool because it allows you to create a bridge to Sneak API and especially to Sneak open source, Sneak infrastructure and Sneak code. So it integrates with, with these three parts of Sneak and also the former two, it uses it as a data provider. So what it does, it runs as a server, it supports, as I already mentioned, language server protocol and it's fully open source, so you can use it, you can contribute to it. I really highly recommend to you to contribute. There is also like overview of the commands, how to install it, pretty easy. And what it does, it takes the data from Sneak and displays these data in your IDE. And that's pretty cool. So if you are interested in more, just let me know. Maybe I should create like a separate video about just language server and language server protocol, but this thing it's mega cool. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I'm very happy to stay with me till very end. If you will find any free resources from Sneak or about Sneak, just feel free to share it in the comments for the community and for others that are watching this episode. And I am looking forward to spend some time together next time. So see you.